Today we're making spooky, elegant crafts. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For project number one, we are going to be doing a spider frame. We're going to use some spider web and some creepy cloth, this Dollar Tree sign with the skulls on it, and then this is a thrifted frame. It's got some wire across it. Maybe a little girl had it for bows. I'm not sure. But I thought this would look very pretty with this. So on the edge of this Dollar Tree sign, it's kind of rough. You can kind of see the little MDF or cardboard. So I'm just going to take my little emery board here and just file this down. I found this at Dollar Tree. It's really good for these projects where you got to get around the little bumps and curves. Look, I'm filing his teeth there. And just go all the way around so that you don't see the paper sticking out. I'm going to use my antiquing wax and a baby wipe and just dot some on there and rub it together and we are going to make some shadowing and some dimension on this by going around the edges all the way around and you can make this as wide as you would like if you would prefer to do this with a brush if you like the brush strokes you can do that but I really like to do this. I feel like I have a little more control with a wipe in my fingers. You want to put the shadows where the eye orbits are, around the nose area, maybe around the jawline, and where the heads sit on top of one another. Because those are the places that you would naturally see shadows. And by doing this, you're going to make this Dollar Tree sign look a lot more expensive. Now while that is drying, we are going to work on this beautiful frame. Now this is a white frame and it's a bright white and I prefer a more rustic look, a more aged look. And certainly if this is something that we would find in a haunted home, a haunted house, then we would want it to be more dark. We would look, we would think that it would be maybe aged or gilded or something like that. For me, I am going to just make it look like it is very aged. And kind of dusty and dirty like it would be if it was in a very old home so I'm just using a dry brushing technique for this dotting it in that wax dotting most of it off and then going back over all of the indentions and details and raised areas on here don't worry about if it looks like it's too dark because we're gonna be wiping back most of this what I mean by that is I'm going to be using a dry cloth and wiping off all of the areas on the top. And that's really going to bring more attention to the recessed areas. If you want to send me an email with some of the projects you have done that maybe I've inspired you to do, feel free to send them to me at my email address, which is in the description box below. I would love to see it, and I would also love at some point to feature some of these projects on my channel so that you get some attention to your work. Continue around all the way till you get as much detail as you want, and then here I am taking that dry um, cloth and just wiping it off. So the top parts are going to be, you see how that looks so much more detailed now? I'm going to give you a closer look. I'll lift it up for you and let you see. See the difference? Oh, I love this. I've had this frame for probably a year and a half waiting to do a project like this. So I'm going to use some of this black spider web. Certainly if you prefer to use the white, you can do that. If you like the neon, uh, the purples, the pinks, the whatever you have, just go ahead and use that to suit your taste. And then there's a depression around here and I thought, okay, well, I wasn't really sure how it would work using hot glue just on the fabric. So I thought if we would use some popsicle sticks, they'll fit right down in that area and it should kind of trap the spider web between the frame and the popsicle stick. And that would hold it together better. So that's just what I did. But you can use whatever te technique that you've used previously and whatever works best for you. You know, I'm learning too. I don't have any um, training in doing this type of thing. It's just self-taught. Everything I do is self-taught. My florals, the painting, everything is just self-taught. So I'm still learning too, just like you are. Alright, so now I'm going to take some of this creepy cloth. Now this is more like a 
It's almost like a cheesecloth, but it's called creepy cloth, but it's not like the ones from Dollar Tree. I got it at the thrift store and I really couldn't tell you. However, I feel like whether you use this type or the one with the looser weave, any of that would look good. This is just gonna give it a little more dimension again. And I'm going to, um, you can see I'm trimming it now. But I used the same technique when I put the spider web down. I used just a little bit more of the popsicle stick. You can see the smaller pieces to just glue that one down right on top of it, just sandwich in between. And so now that we've got the back finished and I'm, I'm satisfied with that, I'm gonna go ahead and work on how we're gonna attach this sign down to the frame. Luckily, there are lots of little gaps in the frame on the side. So we can just use our pipe cleaners and some hot glue and I'm just using some masking tape and press these into place so that we have something to put through those open areas and attach it to the frame. These little spatulas are great to keep you from burning your fingers because um, the glue gun I'm currently using will take your fingerprints off. Yeah, that's the big boy over there. Now I'm just gonna feed these through this frame and I hope y'all can find something like this. Maybe you have an old mirror that's broken. You could get the frame. I feel like this was probably a mirror at one point and somebody else repurposed it and when they were done they took it to the thrift store and so I was able to benefit from it. It's like a plastic material. It's very very lightweight so it didn't cost me very much at all which is always a plus because I am super thrifty. Oh by the way the popsicle stick you could see there on the bottom I do fix that. It came loose but I do fix that no worries. All right, so I am going to go ahead and put some more spider web on the top of this frame. If you don't want to do this at this point, you can wait until the last step to do it. But for me, because I know I'm going to put a bow on there, I feel like it will help hold this in place. And anything I can do to make my project stick together and look good and just you know, and be efficient with it and quick with it. We want to get our work done, but we don't want to be here all day long. And you certainly do not want your projects that you worked super hard on to fall apart. And the spider web is just kind of weird. It's not meant to be a permanent thing. You know, it's a Halloween decoration. You use it, you throw it away. Now I'm going to make a bow for it. And I'm not going to make a huge, tremendous, crazy, wacky bow. So don't be afraid. I'm going to use some of that velvet ribbon from Dollar Tree. There's only about three feet on a roll. I'm going to use the spiderweb ribbon from Dollar Tree. And then this is some that I've thrifted. And it's just a small piece. But I'm going to use it and work with it. So I've found when I'm working with scraps of bows that don't have the same lengths, making a funky bow is a really easy way to do it. So this is how you do it. I'm going to have about three or four inches of a loop. You can see I'm folding it over. And I'm going to pinch it about three or four inches down and then place it in the crook between my pointer and my pointer finger and my thumb. I'm going to hold it tightly right there while I continue to fold, pinch, and tuck the next one. Again, if you just have scraps of bows or scraps of ribbons, this is a really easy bow to make that is a nice looking bow. Don't you like the elegance of that black and red and the velvet and the lace? It's so pretty to me. That just, it really looks elegant. And that's what made me think of doing these projects. Something elegant, something that you might would actually see in a very old historical home that's been left alone for a long time. And maybe it's haunted by a super chic ghost. Okay, so we're going to dovetail our ends. These tails are not all the same length, and I, that's, not a, and that's also not a worry with this type of bow. And you'll see in a moment. Go ahead and start fluffing out after you've got your tails all finished. Fluff out the little loops of the bow, and then start pulling these up, almost like an octopus, as if the loops on top were the head of the octopus, and all of these little tails are going to be the legs. That's kind of the idea. You can lay it down and do this, or you can just do it in your hand, whichever way is easiest for you. Pull them apart and pull them away from each other because you don't want all the same colors together. You wanna to kind of divide them up and get good color all the way around. So you see some of those tails are a little bit shorter. I like that. And I will be going ahead here and trimming up a little bit more 
here and there until I get the look that I like. It's always best to have a little bit extra. You know, I think I've mentioned that before with bows, have a little bit extra on there, and then if you trim it off, that's okay, but it's difficult to put anything back, right? So if I wouldn't have been so overzealous, I could have put a pipe cleaner in there to attach it to my project. Hindsight, right? Okay, so we're just gonna use a piece of floral wire and thread it through there. Easy. I do this all the time because I always forget to add something to attach it to the projects. I'm just going to twist it around here tightly to my frame and I like it off to the side. Just going to do some more adjusting on my bow. Never leave a bow unfluffed. It's just not fair. It's just not right. Always fluff your bows. It makes a big, big difference. And you know I love y'all. I want you to have beautiful projects that bring you joy and make you proud when you look at it. When you pass by it, you go, I made that. Yes. So this is how she's gonna look. Very nice, not too big, not overpowering. I'm just moving that around and I don't even glue that top layer down. I just stretch it around. Okay, another thing, last minute. I took two big spiders, these came from Dollar Tree. I use my building blocks on the back to give them, because they're concave, so this will give them something to stand up with. And at the end screen, you're gonna see that these will be attached onto that frame. See there? Now it's got something to glue to. So stay tuned to the end. Next one is our owl cage. Okay, this is something that I have thrifted. This is an owl that I thrifted, so a bird cage and an owl. I've had this little owl for a while now too. It's time for a makeover, so we're going to use some flat black paint. Spray paint them, and then this is how they look. Gorgeous. Very pretty. Love the look of it. I've been hanging on to this project too in my head, and finally for Halloween, we're going to come together. All right, so using some rich wine, burgundy, rust colors we're going to make a beautiful little home inside of this bird cage or whatever you want to call it i'm going to use some floral foam to put on the bottom it doesn't need to fill the entire cage up because you just don't need that much foam and why waste it if you don't have to use it right grab your cool temp glue which i did not use so it immediately started crackling and melting my foam but if you just quickly press it down and hold it in place it'll pretty much stay for you that's my experience at any, at any rate. If you've got a better way of doing it, go right on ahead. So I'm just gonna put my glue bottle, um, my paint bottle in the middle just to hold that space so I know when I'm working my project that there's going to be space there for me to put the owl back in. So it's just a space holder, that's all. If you don't need it, then you don't have to do it. I'm gonna start working in an A pattern right left side to side north south east and west that's what i'm gonna do starting off with my picks on the bottom if i would have had more picks i would have used these instead of using the loose leaves that i have to the side but you never know what you're going to have and if you're going to run out of something i'm going to show you what you can do if you run out of your picks but you have loose flowers so you just take old stems from other flowers or other greenery and you just glue them to the back of a beautiful leaf that you like. It's on wire so it too can be bent and then you just put it in the foam. How easy was that? That was so easy. Now these picks that you see me putting in now are from Target. I got those on 90% clearance a uh, year before last I think. So I've just cut it into pieces because the color is perfect for what I'm looking at. I've got some either eucalyptus or boxwood, whatever this is, that's glittery and black. I've used it in other projects. These were my last two pieces. I'm gonna stand those up in the cage for the, the owl so he will have some privacy in there, a little hiding spot. These little berry picks came off of some of the other greenery. I just pulled them off and I'm just gonna stick those in. They're in a deep purple color, it's just gorgeous. And these beautiful flowers, I don't know what these are. They look like camellias to me, but they are stunning. They're just beautiful. 
I'm going to add those around here and there. They were thrifted as well, y'all, but I know you can get them at Hobby Lobby because at my walkthrough, I saw them. Now for this one, I am going to pull the center out in the first top few layers because I want this to make a little nest. What I'm doing now is taking a wood carving tool and stabbing down on top of the leaves that I glued on the bottom. I don't know where that clip is, but I glued some down. I made that little slice so that we could put the stem from this right down on the inside. It needs to sit nice and flat because this flower is going to be the base or the nest where the owl is going to sit. So it needs to be flat. I'm going to hold it down with my hand for a while and now you can see it forms like a little nest. Do you ever do something when you're crafting and you're like, that is just, you shock even yourself because you think, wow, that's pretty cool. I love it when a project comes together, y'all. I'm telling you right now, I'm not vain. I'm not egocentrical. I'm not stuck up. But when something works out right, I kind of want to pat myself on the shoulder. And then I can show it to you, right? And then you can do it. Doesn't he look happy in there so far? Okay. So giving him a chance to dry, let that glue dry, I'm going to go ahead and cover up the foam that is in the front with a couple of leaves. Same colors that I already have kind of going on there. And I'm using these colors again because I feel like they're, they're elegant, they're jewel tone, they're just really beautiful and dark and mysterious. Oh, I just love it. And then once I close the cage, because the bird is in there and he's happy where he's supposed to be, I'm going to add one flower right into the front with the um, where we already had those leaves we just glued down. So that's where that flower went, right into there. It went right through the leaves into the foam. Now I'm going to turn it from side to side and make sure that it looks fairly symmetrical, nice and even, and that there's an even amount of thickness in the foliage and in the flower so there's no gaps and everything looks pretty and neat you lift it up and look around and make sure everything's like it should be and so here I found a little space that needs a little more foliage so I'm just gonna take another pick same beautiful colors and just push that in there And this is how it will look. I really like this one, y'all. Very pretty. I'd love for you to check out my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. The last and the easiest project is a framed cat. Here's a little thrifted frame that I got. And this is a lantern from Dollar Tree. I'm going to choose which panel I want to use because it has four panels, two different prints, and I like the cat, so I'm going to cut the cat part out and then make sure that it, it works, and yes, it is going to fit nicely in that frame. Perfect. I'm going to cut the top off. I'm going to spray that frame in this black. Once it is dry, we will proceed. Check, check, and recheck, right? I'm going to trace on a piece of scrap paper right on the inside of this frame. And then I'm going to cut right to the outside of the line. You see I leave about a mm, quarter of an inch, give or take, because it does get a little bit bigger as I go around the curve here. And we're going to use this kind of as a template to make sure that I don't cut too much off, but that I have enough to glue down. It'll make sense in a minute. So I'm going to place that down and just use a little bit of regular scotch tape, transparent tape, whatever you want to call it. And this is going to hold it in place while I cut it so nothing slips. Then I'm going to cut the same distance outside of that line to make sure I have plenty and I don't cut it too short. And I'm just cutting through the plastic part and I'm cutting through the paper part. Because I know exactly where I want the cat to be positioned. And this way, I can get it centered right in the frame. Just like that. 
Okay, I'm just using my clear Elmer's school glue for this. You could use probably E6000, I don't know um, how it would do on the plastic, but the Elmer's glue works nicely. I did have to wait a good bit for it to dry, but that's okay because you know, when you're working on a bunch of projects at once, you've got time, you know, leave it alone and move on to something else, right? And this way you won't be able to see it on that plastic film if it does, you know, if you get a little too much or whatever. You won't be able to see it. I'm gently putting it down, tapping it in place with my fingers, and just slightly kind of pulling it to the side to make sure I don't have any wrinkles. Then I'm going to press it down and then let it dry. Once it is dry, you can take some small scissors and just trim off the excess on the back. Y'all, I am so happy with all of the stories I got on my um, Halloween Familiars video. So many people have had black cats in their lives, and I heard so many cat names and about your childhood, and I love that. I hope we can keep doing that. It helps me get to know you, and that's special to me. Because I really do, I really do love and appreciate you guys. I really, really do. So I want this to stand up. And I'm going to use these little Dollar Tree little blocks. You can get this in a pack in the Crafter Square. I just colored them with my Sharpie because, to be honest, I could not find my black furniture repair marker. So this was the next best thing. It was right there, and it does the same thing. Just makes a mess, kind of. I'm going to use hot glue to just attach that to the little parts there. And you won't be able to see it when it stands up. And look how nicely she stands there she is miss okay now here's the candle so i'm going to turn it on and you can see that it flickers it's a little flameless candle and it fits perfectly around that doesn't it it's going to look good together i want to make it look a little richer so i'm going to take some of this bronzy paint and i'm going to be kind of dry brushing this the little paintbrush is from dollar tree and these are good i can't recommend all paint brushes but for me these work really good for this type this technique I just started off by going over the rosebuds and the rose just to kind of see how much coverage I wanted but then I decided to go ahead and just there's little dots on the frame I wanted to go ahead and go around all of those dots and just bring that out just really bring it out I don't want to have completely matte black on this or satin black got to bring some richness back into it right we got all those beautiful colors and tones in the in the frame and in the owl so we need it here too and you see how that just highlighted all those high spots highlighted that it looks so nice and I think she's a cutie all right so here's our beautiful owl and the frame I could have taken some bronze and went over the eyes in the skulls or changed the color to something else, but I like it. It kind of stands out being that it's not exactly the same color, but I don't mind that. And it's Halloween, so we can do the glitter, can't we? You can see how I put the spiders on the frame. Here's our happy owl. I had a couple of scratches on it where I was putting it in the frame, kind of scratching it on the metal, and I just used a paint pen and stuck it through the cracks in the cage and just dotted over, you know, where I had scratched a little paint off. No worries. And then here's our kitty cat, and she's lit up with a flameless candle. I think these projects are definitely spooky elegant. Would you agree? Do you think they are? I think so. If you enjoyed this video, it would help me so much and I would appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. I would love if you would subscribe to the channel if you have not already. We are almost at 20,000 subscribers. What a wonderful, big, strong family. If you've enjoyed this video, you can share it with somebody who you think might enjoy it.
I've said it before and I'll say it again. I believe in you. I know that you are able to do these projects. And I hope, hope that you enjoyed these projects and found some inspiration. I've got a video in the little rectangle here on the screen. Click it next. I think you're going to like it. Bye.